Welcome to Grading 103. This is part four of our counterfeit detection series, and today we'll be talking about uh, some counterfeit gold coins. This presentation is brought to you courtesy of the Professional Coin Grading Service. We'll start today's session by going over once again techniques of counterfeit detection. We'll remind you once again that it's an enormously complex and detailed area, and we look for two major types of counterfeits. Uh, the first is struck or cast counterfeits. That's where the entire coin is fake. Someone uh, created a uh, fake die and uh, struck the entire coin. The second major type of uh, counterfeit is an altered coin where uh, it began life as a genuine coin and the uh, person has made some changes, usually to the date, uh, the mint mark, or some uh, diagnostic for a variety. For most struck counterfeits, uh, you'll find that numerous different dies exist. So even if you identify one, you don't necessarily know them all. And uh, the styles of alteration uh, are extremely, extremely uh, varied. And they've uh, tried all sorts of tricks uh, with uh, dates and mint marks. Uh, you're not going to become a perfect counterfeit detector by watching this short course, but hopefully we'll, you'll get a little familiarity with some of the techniques used by the experts at PCGS to determine authenticity. So we'll get started taking a look at some gold coins. Here's an 1849 gold dollar. This was uh, the first year of issue. And this is a genuine example. You can see it's a nice uh, high-grade coin with loads of luster. Die cracks are usually a genuine characteristic. So you see the die crack coming here out of going through the T and extending a little bit below it and above it. That's uh, usually a genuine characteristic. Here's a counterfeit gold dollar. And uh, at first glance, it looks, uh, looks pretty good. Let's take a closer look. You see some of these depressions on the uh, surface. And uh, these, these depressions, you can tell, are not necessarily hits or made from another coin, but they're actually uh, sort of a hollowed out uh, sunken area on the field that uh, normally doesn't come from circulation. Here's a type two gold dollar. Uh, this is an interesting coin. It's a very high grade piece, but uh, due to the thinness of the gold dollar, you can see the inverted uh, image of Liberty on the back with you see her neck up here towards the top to the left of the one and her chin and her nose going through the D of dollar and uh, then of course the hair in the back going through the R of dollar in the back and of course then you can see some of the uh, wreath details coming through on the front. This is uh, coming from a clash die. Of course that is a genuine coin. Look at the, uh, crisp, the crispness of that die clash here and that uh, usually is a sign of a genuine coin. Here's a counterfeit uh, Type 2 gold dollar, and uh, let's take a look at uh, what's wrong with it. We've got some uh, rough surfaces, and the, just the devices, if you look through the hair in here, just does not have the crispness of a genuine example. Okay? Look carefully at those surfaces and just see some of the roughness that you see on, on that surface. Here's a genuine 1861 Quarter Eagle. This was made at the kickoff of the Civil War, and once again you see uh, how crisp and sharp all the feathers are on the eagle and the hair is on Liberty. Take a look at that date. Again, very crisp and sharp. Nothing irregular about it. Here's a counterfeit 1861 quarter eagle. Okay, and let's take another look at that date. And you see how rough and uh, irregular it is? You see the shapes of the uh, numerals just don't quite look right. That one sort of has a bulge in the center and the whole thing looks just very rough and crude. Look at the serifs on the base of the one on the right. That should be an indication that something's a little bit wrong with this. Here's a 1911 Indian Quarter Eagle. These are rather frequently counterfeited. This one is a genuine example. Look for some die polishing lines in the crescent here. Here's a counterfeit uh, 1911 uh, Quarter Eagle. And once again, at first glance, it doesn't look too bad. But uh, we look for the, uh, looking at some tooling marks in the back of the neck and uh, just some um, generally blurry devices. They're just not quite as sharp as the uh, real thing. You need some pretty good magnification to see all this stuff here. Here's a 1911-10 uh, uh, full eagle, and this is a genuine one. And uh, once again, you want to look for that sharpness and liberty, sharpness of the date. Just the whole thing looks uh, very uh, sharp and clean. Look at the lettering in God We Trust is all very uh, crisp, very sharp. This one's a counterfeit. Color looks a little bit off. 
You look at the little numerous depressions all around the coin and the uh, devices, just uh, these eagle's feathers, uh, wings of the eagle, eagle's breast here. Just the whole thing looks a little bit uh, blurry and out of focus. Look at this big depression here underneath the uh, T in uh, trust. And a double eagle, this is a magnificent example. It's a 1904, very, very common date, but you can tell the condition is absolutely superb on this. And of course, it's genuine, extremely sharply struck. Here's a counterfeit 1904. Once again, you want to look for these depressions on the reverse. You see these little depressions here, lines and stuff like that. This is, uh, this is all stuff that you normally would not see on a uh, real coin. 1926 Saint, uh, this one's a genuine uh, example. You have nice clean fields free of tooling lines and depressions here. You see these are the rays coming out and uh, they look very sharp, very crisp. The fields look very clean. Here's a counterfeit uh, 1926. And once again, we'll look at that same area here. And you see these little depressions and uh, marks here between the date and the rays here. Something you want to keep an eye out for. The reverse here has some raised tooling lines on the, on the rays above we and in God we trust. If you look carefully here, you'll see some uh, tooling lines here. So once again, this is all very complex. And, uh, you know, because a coin has some marks on it, you can't necessarily declare it counterfeit because a lot of genuine coins that have been used have uh, some counterfeit marks. But if the marks appear in the same place on different coins, that's uh, certainly a sign that something's wrong. Here's a 1903 Louisiana Purchase dollar. Uh, this is a commemorative coin, and uh, this is a genuine example, a very attractive one. Once again, you want to look for crisp devices and fields. You see the very uh, even lettering and how sharp and clean it is. Here is a counterfeit uh, Louisiana Purchase. This one's pretty easy to tell. You take a good look at the lettering here, and you see it just looks very lumpy and crude and just has nowhere close to the sharpness of the um, genuine example. A 1915 S Pan Pack 2.5, very attractive coin. Uh, this is a genuine uh, copy. Once again, take a good look at that date. You see it's crisp. You've got some die polishing lines through the date, so that's okay. But just in general, the entire date looks very sharp and crisp. Here is a counterfeit. Once again, it looks the whole thing looks a little bit blurrier. And if you look at that date, you see just general roughness in the fields and just the depressions around the coin, especially this, this one here on the left and the one here. Uh, it, just, it just looks moth-eaten and very, very eroded. And a 1917 McKinley gold dollar. This is a genuine. And uh, there's a lot of fine detail in the um, back of this coin. Look at the fine lines and the steps. Nice sharp date, nice sharp lettering. Here's a counterfeit uh, 1917 McKinley. And you see here it has uh, blurry devices with uh, rough fields and depressions. You see these letters here look very crude, especially towards the bottom. The steps here are not at all sharp. And uh, just even the bottom steps don't look good. This whole coin is just um, very soft and very, very difficult to uh, see the fine details on. And see how soft that lettering is at the bottom there. It's uh, uh, really, really near the edges. It looks extremely out of focus. And uh, here's a 1926 Sesqui two and a half. And uh, beautiful color on this. This is a genuine example. And uh, you want to take a look at the uh, well-defined lettering here. You see the date here is sort of engraved with uh, some areas uh, that are a little bit depressed around it that was characteristic of the design. But uh, it's still very sharp and clear. And once again, the devices, the head of uh, Liberty here is uh, very sharp and clear. Here's a counterfeit, and uh, let's take a quick look at those same areas. See the lettering here is very soft and mushy, and uh, looks uh, like there's a lot of wear on the coin even though there isn't. And the devices just have nowhere near the sharpness or clearness of the genuine coin. So if you see uh, this uh, sort of out of focus look with sort of luster on the coin, uh, something to be aware of. So once again, we'll reiterate our key points here. 
our purpose is not to show you every possible counterfeit dye or diagnostic that would take um, many, many years. However, we hope you've gained a little bit of insight into the appearance of some struck fakes, some telltale signs of mint marks, and some of the appearance of uh, altered dates. Becoming an expert counterfeit detector takes a lifetime of work. It's an ongoing process, and you've got to stay current because they're making new counterfeits every day. So we thank you again for watching and hope you've enjoyed our look at counterfeit detection.